my first question to you is, what is, in your opinion, the role of mathematics in neurobiology? The role of uh, mathematics in uh, neurobiology is important. Um, it has to be developed further, but the basic idea is uh, unlike the custom, which is uh, I will develop a model of some uh, neurobiological phenomenon, I will write a few equations, and then I will simulate, or I will run these equations on a computer, look at the experimental results, and uh, if they fit the measurements, the observations, then I'm, I'm happy. The model is correct. Uh, otherwise, I'll try again and, uh, and build up uh, another model. Mathematicians do not proceed this way. Uh, Suppose a mathematician is given such a model, he or she will perhaps run the equations on a computer to uh, get a feel, a feeling for, for what's happening. But uh, they will not stop at this point. They will try to prove, mathematically prove, the, uh, the behavior of the solutions or the, the properties of the solutions uh, when, uh, when, uh, for example, uh, when a solution uh, may explode, uh, explode become become infinite. Uh, therefore, therefore, the model is, that says that the model is incorrect. But the the main, the key idea, the main, the, the key word is proof. Uh, with a mathematical proof, you can very clearly. Uh, draw delineate uh, the borders of a model where when it is applicable when it's not applicable and sometimes why it's not applicable and this is uh this is remote this is far remote from what you obtain from simple or well, simple that's not always simple but from single uh, numerical simulations so mathematicians again uh, bring proofs to the field. They also can, in some cases, bring new ideas, uh, some piece of mathematic uh, that has not been used so far that uh, they think, mathematicians think, uh, they might be useful to analyze or, or, uh, or describe some neural phenomena. Um, this is the case in, in physics where pieces of mathematics uh, have been brought to the field and uh, very successfully, uh, people always refer to uh, the discovery of, uh, of, uh, of relativity and uh, there was a lot of uh, geometric work in, uh, in mathematics that was uh, very useful and brought to use uh, for developing the theory of general relativity. So to summarize, uh, mathematicians can provide proofs of uh, properties of the solutions of the models. These proofs uh, help circumscribing uh, the validity and the non-validity of uh, the models. That's point number one. And point number two, uh, mathematicians can bring new ideas, uh, new methods to the field uh, from existing uh, pieces of mathematics. In your opinion, which will be the challenges of mathematical neuroscience? I would say master the question of scales. Uh, I, I was discussing these some of these ideas in my presentation. Uh, the, the central neural systems in, in humans is uh, is composed of very very different scales from molecules to the whole the whole body so we go from the meter to the angstrom so the scales the the space scales are huge very different and the phenomena that happen at different scales uh, are very different are described by different uh, models and putting all these bricks together into something coherent is a major challenge I would say this is one. Uh, another very difficult challenge also is uh, to uh, to draw the line between determinism and uh, and stochasticity, between stochastic models and deterministic models. Uh, 
you have to play with two very different areas of mathematics. Uh, the theory, let's say, of dynamic systems, dynamical systems, uh, with all its ramifications, the bifurcation theory, uh, ergodicity, and so on and so forth. And the theory of stochastic differential, or the, the theory of uh, stochastic computation. Uh, they are quite different. Uh, and uh, there are few people master both. So it, it's a challenge for mathematicians to be uh, to be an expert in stochastic calculus and uh, theory of dynamic system, dynamical systems. And this is a, a, a very important challenge because as I go back to this question of scales, uh, things that the larger scales can be usually described uh, by deterministic models, whereas at smaller scales, uh, things can be usually described by stochastic uh, models, sorry, and uh, putting things together uh, requires understanding both, uh, both theories. So this is related to the scale challenge, but it's a different one.